here. There was a man who showed up at the pearly gates and he meets St. Peter. And you know, St. Peter's got that bag of questions that he always has to ask before you get into heaven. And he says, whips one out and he goes, have you ever told the truth at a time when other people wouldn't have told the truth? And the guy says, I, you know, I, I, that's an easy one. I actually pumped into a motorcycle gang one time and their logo was really bad. They painted on all their bikes and just ugly and they were kind of ugly as well. And, and uh, when I saw the leader of the pack, I actually told him the truth. And then he says, your bikes are ugly and you are too. And, and St. Peter's like, wow, I don't have that in the records. When did that happen? About a minute ago. <laughs> Proverbs 18. Yeah. Proverbs 18.21. The tongue has power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Or I'm going to read out of the CEB edition. Words can bring death or life. Talk too much, and you will eat everything that you say. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we talk so much. We say so many things in our, the course of our day and our week. And, uh, and your word just told us that our words have this power, an immense power of life and death. So I'm just asking you right now, Lord, would you teach us about the power of our words? What that has to do with faith um, in our life? And... Uh, and right now, I just ask that I would surrender my tongue and that you would make my words short and sweet tonight, today. In Jesus' name, amen. The tongue has a power of death. I'd like to just talk about that for just a few moments here. And I'd like to just kind of leave us in a simple exercise. So if you could just close your eyes right where you're at right now. Just kind of just start imagining like you're... Your, you know, let, let your imagination go as you hear the next words I'm going to speak. So, just close your eyes. Ugly. Clumsy. Idiot. Hopeless. Stupid. Failure. Divorce, hate, how, how does it make you feel? You can open your eyes now. Have, have you ever been killed by somebody's words? Have you ever been taken to a place that a word shouldn't have the power to take you to. Have you ever been put down in a place that you have been injured? And you're like, but it was only words. How can that, how could that set me back? You know, and, and isn't it interesting? The power of those words were able to take us from this high place that we were just experiencing this awesome worship of God and the electricity was up and the kids were singing and the power of just a few words can just bring us down. And for some people, words spoken to us 5, 10, 15, 20, even 50 years ago can have this lasting impact and can leave scars. It just happens. And some of us can almost relate and, and even say what those words were and when they were spoken and, and how they set and defined your life. And the words just kind of rolled so easily from somebody, whether it was a, you know, a, a peer in school, whether it was a teacher, a uh, there was a parent, somebody in the workplace, and they just kind of just roll so easily, and they do their damage. You remember the sting of the words, you know, you can't, you won't, you'll never add up to anything, why don't you just think a little bit more? And they, and they're so, so short, just these little sound bites can just like, boom, but they can weigh so heavily on the soul. They make you feel less. When negative words are spoken, they can have this death feel to them. Hopeless, powerless, worthless. <clears throat> and the great offender never even realizes what they had done 
when they sin. They don't come back and repent and say, I'm sorry. They don't even acknowledge it. They just go on the weary way. And it almost kills you even twice because they said it and they just moved on. We know when somebody else does that to us. But we marvel that we're even able to do that. We're, we marvel that we even have the capacity that our words can bring that kind of death into somebody's life. Well, they're just words. The proverb says, the tongue has the power of life and of death. Your tongue has the power of life and death. So what does that mean? I mean, we speak so many words every day. What are we going to do with that? No one is immune to speaking damage. Here's the fact. Faith is releasing the power of God in your life. But words work exactly the same way. They release the power of God in your life for either good or for either bad. And so words and faith are tightly woven together. I'm not going to get into the scholarly part of that, but if those who want to talk after service, we can get into the rhema power of the word. Um, but we speak 15,000 to 30,000 words a day. That's a lot of power just floating out there in and out of our control, isn't it? And so we've really got to learn how to get a hold of those words. It's, it's Father's Day. So I'm just going to just touch on this. We as dads and moms need to make sure that we are careful with our words with our kids. Sometimes we're killing our kids' spirit one negative word at a time. And we're just, and we're, and we're just going after them, right? We're trying to help them grow up, you know? And, and, and they're just not. So you just keep going after them and going after them. And things aren't getting better in the house or in your life. And you're saying, but Pastor, you don't understand. My kid acts so immature. They're kids. They're not mature. It's okay. Kids act like kids. I don't know what it is about some of us parents who think that kids have got to come out acting like they're 28 years old. I don't know. My daughter's not here. She's, she's like 28. <laughs> don't, don't let your kids act like my daughter. I love her. It takes 20, the studies are really consistent, go ahead and Google them. It takes 20 positive statements to undo one negative statement to a child. And some of us are way behind. And our words have the power of life and death. Breathe life in there. It's a release of God's power. It agrees with God's word. It's a faith word. It's the same thing with people, your co-workers, your neighbors, your family. These are people. Romans 14, 4 talks about everybody's made in the image of God, and we need to respect them and let God be the judge of them and not us. And we've got to be careful and treat people with this love and respect with our words. Because when we don't, we cause damage. We're releasing a negative power into the universe. And I'm not talking about love poetry to each other all the time. But I am talking about asking God what words I can use to actually bless somebody. How can I be an improvement in somebody's life and breathe life into their life instead of death? And it's okay to pray, even just say, God, what do you want me to say to this individual right now? Especially the hard, difficult ones, the Del Griffiths, you know, of this world. How am I going to say something? Little words mean a lot, too. You're like, Kind of goes with a lot of different things, right? Adam Sandler makes movies. Kind of. <laughs> and if you've seen his last run of them, bad stuff, you know? I can tolerate Celine Dion. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I think this is just information. It's off on the side. Here's message, here's information. Celine Dion just last month admitted that she can't stand that Titanic song either. <laughs> so it makes it unanimous. Thank you, Celine. 
But it doesn't go so well when I say, I love you, honey. Kind of. Seriously. The doctor tells you, you're going to live. Kind of. <laughs> See the difference of words, even the small words you think don't mean anything, those actually can have a power in your life. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Close your eyes again. It won't be so scary this time. What do you think? You are smart. You are blessed. You are talented. You are gifted. You're a person of possibility. You can do anything. How do you feel? You can just feel levity in the room. You can open your eyes now. It just kind of, those words kind of make you feel like those words because they have a power. These kind of positive words can actually have the same power to change your life as a negative word can pound you down over and over again. And there's something about this release of physical words. If you can get this today, this is the main point. Physical words have a release of spiritual power. Whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, the scriptures are very clear that they do. And that's what faith is all about. I'll take you back to my mom. My mom was my ultimate cheerleader in life. I just remember growing up and you can do anything you want to, Chip. That's what my nickname is, by the way. <laughs> You'll be able to do anything. You're going to be good. You're going to be successful. You're going to be great. And this was the same woman who saw my report cards all the time. And they said the opposite. It was the worst. Every teacher was busy feeding me the negative. Like, you a loser, but I'm going to pass you to get you out of my class. And I'm not joking about that either. And she, I said, I'm going to own my own business when I get older. And she's like, you're going to, and you're going to be successful at it. And you're going to take care of me in my old age. You're going to get me a Georgian mansion with a circular drive. And she painted these pictures for me. There was no history in our family of business people, of education. There was nothing that you could see in this little boy that would be able to amount to anything. But she would take her time, and she even instruct me, she goes, these are the kind of jobs you take. This is how you take school. These are the kind of jobs you don't take. And I listened. That just filled me up. And I became successful in a number of different business countries. And there are certain jobs to this day that even if I was starving, I would not take because my mama told me not to. <laughs> Period. And those words spoken so many years ago have this power in my life even to this day. Do you guys get that? Words spoken so long ago have a residual power to affect a life now. That is the power of the tongue to breathe life into other people. And you and I have that power to issue into other people's lives. Just think for a moment, who is your ultimate cheerleader in your life? Go back. Somebody got to go way back. Was it a teacher? Was it a parent? Was it a friend? Is it a friend? Is it a co-worker? And that person had a way of breathing life into you and breathing encouragement. And, and you didn't even know if you deserved it, but they just like, they, they gave it to you. And it sticks with you. And it, and it lifts you up. They were speaking faith into your life. Because faith is speaking of things that agree with God's word. And those things become reality in your life and the life that who you're speaking life into. Does that make sense? So, week one, we started out by talking, faith is simply trust in God. It's trust, it's believing that He hears you and that He is on your side and that you should dare to believe he's going to do great things for you in your life. He's going to, he's active, he's not far away, I just trust him. 
Trust him in his way, his time, period. Week two, if you're going through a storm, or if you're the aftermath of the storm, you still are fully persuaded in faith that he exists and he's still going to do something. And maybe, you, you know, you're that, that ship in the storm and the fingertip of God is right at the top, the very tippy tip, you know, and, and, but his power is able to guide you through. Be fully persuaded of that. But today we're talking about how you release faith through your words, negative and positive. It's important. Because what I do and what I say to other people is a way that God is working through me. And I choose to work with him or I can work against him. There's a flip side to this coin. I can be a blessing or a curse to somebody else's life, but the tail end of that verse says, you will have to eat your words. What does that mean? What does that mean? Let me take you back, oh, it's late 90s. One of those times when I was very spiritually aware, I'm driving down the highway in my convertible and I'm loving the trip and it's awesome sunny day. And, and I get behind this big juicy van from 1972 that I didn't even know was still on the road. It had the murals kind of rusting away, broken roof rack, one of those huge mirrors that stick way out on the side. You know, it's, it, it's one that, uh, you know, Kunis Ford would just love to get their mitts on and throw in the garbage. <laughs> the quarter panels were rusting off, and it had this foul exhaust that was just putrid. And so all I wanted to do was pass this van. And every time I get over there, I get, oh, I can't get past it, but I gotta get past it because the stench was so royally bad. So I finally get my opportunity on Route 67 and I pull out there and I get on the other side and it's all clear and I have enough time to be able to see that big mirror that he has on the side there and I see the reflection of his face and his face has this nasty scowl on it at me. And I realize as I'm passing, I have the exact same scowl on my face. And so I get past him and I kind of dawns on him wait a minute, this guy sees scowls all the time. But he doesn't know, he thinks the whole world is scowling all the time. But the fact of the matter is, people are scowling with that stench because of his vehicle. It's not everybody, it's just people around him because his exhaust stinks. Amen? Where are you going with this thing? <laughs> Our words are our exhaust. And our words build our world. And sometimes you are 10 feet in front of your words and you can't smell it. But everybody around you can and they're responding to it and your world looks really crappy because your exhaust is making life crappy. I can say that on Sunday morning. Because it's true. You're eating the results of your words and you don't even know it. You don't understand why the whole world is like this, but they're only that get around you. Your words are coming out, building your world, and people act like that. People say, I'm getting away from that. I won't be a part of that. Why aren't my kids close to me? I don't know. Maybe you've got to review your words, maybe. Some of the most damaging words we speak are the ones we're not aware of. Because we're like, well, I don't understand. I don't understand why people keep their distance, right? I don't know why they're shy or I don't, I don't know why they don't ask my advice or my opinion, but they ask other people. Matthew 12, 35. Jesus said, The good man brings good things out of the good stored up him, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored in him. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Just take that in. I mean, that's some heavy stuff, and that's Jesus. Jesus, you're the nice guy. You're not supposed to be talking like this to us. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. 
And he just said it was about the careless words. The King James says idle words. You know, idle is what the engine just does when it's just kind of running in the driveway, doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Kind of like our words, we're just like, no, oh, those words really aren't doing anything. They're just kind of numbing along, numbing along, no real purpose behind them. And Jesus says, you will have to give account for those words. Just those careless words, words you don't even think about. I'm going to have to give an account to them. We blame other people for the damage that we're actually causing. And we're going to have to give account for those careless words we're speaking. And furthermore, we have to live with those words. That last verse says, by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. In other words, my words are either going to give me a life of freedom, or they're going to give me a life of condemnation. In the next life, when I give account to Jesus, but he's saying also now, in this present life, your words are building your world. You will have to live with them either way. If you're feeling heavy bondage in your life overall, review your words. Look at what you're saying. See what you're putting out there. Maybe in other, other words, check your exhaust. And the world that you're experiencing is really just a reflection of the faith that you're exhibiting or your lack thereof through your words and through your actions. The truth of the guy in the van, it was just the guy in the van. It wasn't the whole world. It was just what he was doing. And sometimes our words are so normal to us, we don't realize that they're crazy. We don't realize that they're the source of our problem. Matthew 15, 18. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these make a man unclean. The words I speak tell on my heart. Do you get that? When you say something and you think you're out of control, it's, it's actually just your heart speaking. When you say words that aren't of faith and they're of negativity, it's just a mirror into your heart. And so I would just invite you this morning, just for the next few minutes, Look into the mirror of your words. Ask God to just kind of refresh your mind and your memory of some of the words you've spoken that have had that power for either death or life. And so right now, let's just kind of bow our heads.